in a dystopian, post-apocalyptic world where people are categorized as insiders or outsiders, a milkman is given a dangerous mission in exchange for something he desires the most, while remaining unaware of the sinister schemes behind the agreement. While driving, John, an exceptional milkman, narrates how a bug shut down all computers in the world 20 years ago, which led to losing electricity and the internet. Authorities built walls around cities and threw transgressors out to survive independently. The good citizens live within the walls, so they're called insiders, while those with bad records, called outsiders, struggle to survive outside the colonies. Only some, called the milkmen, drive around to deliver packages from city to city in exchange for some goods. One day, looters with heavily armed modified vehicles chase John. Despite the transgressor's intense pursuit, the milkman remains motormouth as he skillfully maneuvers his car Evelyn to get rid of his enemies. John soon arrives in New California, where a guard Abner checks his identity. Doug, a senior guard, informs the milkman that the other guy is new, so John taunts him more while explaining the package details. Other insiders pick up the package in exchange for gasoline. Then, Doug tells him to deliver some items to other colonies. The milkman goes his merry way in delivering his packages, despite constantly being pursued by other outsiders. On his way to New San Francisco, he stops in a forest, but a man and a woman try to take his car's weapons. When he gives them a warning shot, the man man hurriedly runs, but the woman jeers at him, so he notices her missing digit. Afterward, he spends some time by the beach, where he sees a family of seals which he finds fascinating. That evening, John somberly stares at a burned picture of his family, whom he can't recall. The following day, the milkman arrives at his destination, finding outsiders in their pitiful state outside the walls while armed soldiers welcome him by the entrance. After a brief and familiar greeting, John asks about the subsequent delivery, but the chief operator Operating officer or COO instructs the commander to let the outsider in. John is ushered where to park, but he struggles in parallel parking. Then he's escorted to the sanitation area, hosed with green fluid and sprayed with perfume. Upon dressing up, he's brought to a bar where an elegant woman introduces herself as Raven, the COO of San Francisco. Though she's friendly, John remains wary since his situation is uncertain. Raven tells him he's the only milkman who regularly comes for deliveries compared to others who fail to return. Therefore, she wants to hire him to pick up a secret package and return it to her. However, upon hearing that the item is in New Chicago, an infamous colony, John immediately refuses. Raven authoritatively tells him to stay and declares that she can give him anything he desires with her power. The COO tours him in the city. Seeing such a peaceful sight, John is mesmerized, so Raven offers him to be a citizen if he completes the mission. Meanwhile, in Nevada, police chase after the man and woman John met in the forest. Despite their weapons and driving skills, the police subdue them. In New San Francisco, Raven invites John to her home, where he meets her husband Noah and her baby Dove. The milkman becomes fascinated upon witnessing what a warm family looks like, especially since he lost his childhood memories. Raven asks him again about her offer, and John finally agrees. The family escorts him to the car, and the COO hands him a watch for his 10-day mission countdown. However, the milkman struggles to escape from the parallel parking, making the couple skeptical of his skills. As soon as he leaves, Raven hands Dove to her staff and instructs her to return the infant to the real mother while she tells Noah that his payment is in his apartment. Meanwhile, in Nevada, Agent Stone, the leader of the police in pursuit, discusses his ideology of removing every transgressor to save the world. The captive outsiders can only listen as the agent tells them that they can choose their punishment, to accept their end or sacrifice one's life to save the other. The siblings stare at each other and hold hands as they accept their fate. But at the last moment, the brother takes his own life to save his sister. Stone notices her missing finger and realizes she's from Orange County, where severe punishments are implemented. Then, the cops drag the woman and brand her with their seal. Stone leaves her with a bullet to mock her survival. The woman grabs it as she composes herself to face the world alone. On the other hand, John enters an abandoned diner. However, his foot activates a trap, so he calls Tommy, the establishment owner and cartographer. The older man deactivates the trap, and the milkman requests a map to New Chicago. Tommy's mood turns somber as he warns John of the risks, but the delivery man convinces him to give him a detailed map to help him avoid danger. Tommy presents the map and reiterates that the roads have no cover, so he has to 
deal with looters and authorities head on. The cartographer asks him again if the reward is worth risking this much, and memories of New San Francisco flash in John's mind. The milkman grins and leaves Tommy with a box of crayons. Finally, the cartographer warns him of Vegas due to the notoriety of a specific dweller. Hours later in Las Vegas, a burly man with a clown mask named Sweet Tooth hears a vehicle roaring, so he cackles in excitement. The surviving female sibling also notices a car and prepares for its arrival. Meanwhile, John mumbles his complaints about the small size of the map. He notices a strange drawing on it, but when he looks forward, a woman is blocking the road, so he maneuvers to avoid her. Just as the milkman is about to grab his revolver, the woman already has him at gunpoint. She fires a warning shot and gestures for him to leave the car. John defends himself by having her at the mercy of his knife. Then he recognizes her due to the missing finger. Seeing that she's wearing her partner's jacket, John assumes the man is gone. So he negotiates with her since the clown car is rapidly approaching them. They both draw the guns from the milkman's pockets and point them at their common enemy. However, everything is unloaded. So John frantically finds finds the bullets, realizing that the stranger is driving away with his car. He sprints toward it and successfully hops inside. They argue and threaten each other. But when Evelyn suddenly sputters, the woman hands the wheel to the owner. Annoyed by a companion who constantly threatens him, John hits the brakes, and the woman hits her head. Sweet Tooth signals him to roll down the window and asks if he wants to watch a show. The milkman responds by shooting at the clown before speeding away. But Sweet Tooth has planted explosives, causing John to crash Evelyn into a building. Meanwhile, in a roadside diner where humans are the delicacy, Stu and Mike, former guards fired for slacking off, bicker about their tragic fate. Suddenly, the diner staff falls lifeless as Stone's men wipe them out. The former guards are rescued, and the leader asks them if they want to join their group, which Mike excitedly accepts, so Stu follows suit. In Vegas, the milkman's car is damaged due to the crash. Sweet Tooth arrives, so the woman uses John as a diversion to escape from the enemy. The driver becomes helpless against the invincible villain. Sweet Tooth plays music to set the mood, and John sings along to relate with him. Surprisingly, the clown appreciates their common ground, so the milkman asks if he can leave after the show. Instead of answering, Sweet Tooth drags him along to prepare for the opening night. Meanwhile, Agent Stone and Agent Shepard, his right-hand man, show Stu and Mike the benefits of being on their team. Mike becomes enamored as he sees how well provided the officers are. Then, they're given an initiation mission to protect the supply truck. On the other hand, the conversation between Sweet Tooth and John leads them to a common childhood memory, waking up in a car with a head injury. The only difference is the milkman's amnesia. Simultaneously in the initiation mission, Stu tells Mike that something feels off since the supply truck seems to be bait. However, his friend dismisses his concerns as he remains thrilled about holding a rifle. Soon, outsiders arrive to get supplies from the vehicle. Stu turns anxious, but Mike suddenly shoots one of the men. Agent Stone urges Stu to deal with the remaining outsider, but he misses the first shot. He tries again and succeeds, so his superior reminds him not to repeat the mistake. In Vegas, Sweet Tooth tours John in his quarters and introduces his best friend, which is a paper bag. The milkman goes along with him and shares about Evelyn, his car, which the clown thinks is weird. Because of the car's name, Sweet Tooth is reminded of the woman he captured earlier, so he presents her to John. The milkman sees his former companion inside a glass tank as she gestures for him to help her. John refuses to help someone who puts him in danger, but she shows him Evelyn's keys. Due to this, the driver convinces the clown to make the woman an audience too. Sweet Tooth nonchalantly agrees since he's already reserved a table for them. John asks what will happen after the show, so the clown explains that no one has left since nobody lasted the whole show. The burly man offers them food while John persuades the woman to cooperate. However, silence and hostility are her only answers. Finally, Sweet Tooth's performance begins, and the audience soon realizes how boring the lengthy program is. They do their best to stay awake to avoid having a similar fate to those who failed to complete the show. When it's done, the clown asks them for feedback, so John showers him with praises, which the performer knows as pure lies. The woman suddenly comments that it's a dull show below the clown's capability. The men are surprised
surprised upon learning she can speak. She signals John to agree with her, and they criticize his performance objectively, pointing out that he has to widen his horizons by exploring the world. Sweet Tooth becomes elated by their honesty and declares that his show will be on the road. The following day, the milkman fixes his car, and the clown gives them a drawing as a remembrance for being his first fans and the first people who survived his performance. Meanwhile, Mike adjusts well with their team members, while Stu can't recover from taking an innocent life. Sweet Tooth burns his dwellings in Vegas as he sets off to perform outside with his best friend, the paper bag. On the other hand, John and his companion agree that she'll be dropped off at her destination. The man becomes annoyed by not knowing what to call the woman, so he asks her name. However, she remains silent, so John names her quiet, which she agrees to. Just as hours pass peacefully, they arrive at an open road checkpoint where Mike, Stu, and Shepard keep watch. Stu politely asks for some identification from John, but Quiet recognizes Shepard and immediately points her gun at him. Mike electrocutes her with a stun gun, and she collapses, so the milkman comes to her aid, but Stu subdues him in the same way. Quiet remembers her brother upon seeing John on the ground, so she stops retaliating. Shepard checks the branding they left her and mocks the woman, making John realize the gist of the conflict. Once escorted into the facility, Quiet realizes it's the Department of Motor Vehicles rather than an actual police headquarters. They're brought to the interrogation room, and Mike taunts them while Stu mimics his friend. Afterward, the former guards inspect Evelyn, and Stu expresses his discomfort toward Agent Stone's leadership. In contrast, Mike adores him, especially after hearing a story about the leader's success in obliterating transgressors alone in his town. Stu finds John's family picture and a map he attempts to hide from Shepard, but his superior immediately notices it. Upon seeing the map, the right-hand man is shocked and immediately reports it to his superior. Stone and Shepard soon enter the interrogation room to confront the captives about the cartographer, since all of the outposts he's built in the past decades are avoided in the sketch. John tries to talk his way out of the problem, but Quiet suddenly spits on Agent Stone, surprising the men. Shepard hits them both, but the woman remains remains strong as she mocks the leader by implying he's a coward by not having the guts to pull the trigger himself. Before leaving, Stone commands his right-hand man to squeeze out the cartographer's name as memories flood his mind. Twenty years ago in a mall in Topeka, the younger officer Stone interrupted two women to lecture them about smoking. Though he tried to act cool, the ladies belittled him for being a mall cop. He lamely pointed out that he's officially a cop, but before he could retaliate more, phone signals were gone. All electrical devices malfunctioned and aerial vehicles fell from the sky. Days later, the situation worsened, and as Officer Stone returned to his house carrying supplies, his pregnant neighbor named Maggie offered to help him open the door. He asked how she and her husband Rick were doing, but he soon realized it was a massive mistake as the couple stole all of his weapons before mocking him and hitting him unconscious. In the present time, Stu and Mike are assigned to squeeze the information out of their captives. The cops put earplugs before turning on the bar Barbie Girl song as their background music while they punish John and Quiet using various methods. However, the captives remain rebellious as John declares how he sees the cartographer as a family. Agent Stone mocks Quiet for trashing her life despite her brother's sacrifice. The woman boils in anger and vows to chase after the leader, which the man takes as an empty threat. Stone tells Shepard they can be compromised due to the mapmaker, so the right-hand man volunteers to inform HQ. However, the leader proclaims that he'll handle it alone. The leader calls the day when the neighbors stole his weapons, and he miserably cried while drowning himself in liquor. A restaurant owner asked him for help as outlaws kicked him out of his establishment. Stone refused to assist him, so the older man disappointedly commented about his decorative cop title, which pushed the wasted man to get his late father's gun. Upon arriving at the restaurant, Stone discovered that the outlaws were civilians. They explained that they were only trying to get some food. Officer Stone declared they were still breaking the law and commanded them to leave. One of the trespassers recognized him as a security guard, so he insulted his fake identity as a cop. As the civilians laughed at him, he lost his temper and shot everyone. He realized too late that a child was included among those he hurt. However, he blamed the incident on the instigator and justified his actions by saying they broke the law. At present, John and Quiet anxiously wait for their next punishment, and the woman finally opens up about her brother's demise. The milkman consoles her by saying she is lucky to have clear memories of her loved ones ones, unlike him. He adds that completing this mission can make him feel that he's someone's family. Soon, their turn has come. 
and Shepard assigns Stu to escort them. As they head to their destination, the guard can't help but vent his frustrations by blabbering about his insecurities. They arrive at the door and Stu instructs them to open it. The captives panic upon seeing that behind the door is the edge of a cliff. They persuade Stu to help them because he's a good guy. The guard finally agrees in exchange for letting him escape with them. He leads the captives to the storage room to retrieve their key, but Quiet notices her brother's jacket, enlightening her vengeful feelings. Upon realizing she's gone, John tells Stu they must leave. Meanwhile, Quiet finds Shepard, and she asks him the whereabouts of Stone. The agent taunts her more, to which she responds with stern insults before she repeatedly hits him to avenge her brother. Simultaneously, Mike notifies his team about the captive's escape, while Quiet discovers that the enemy HQ is in Topeka. The alarm blares in the facility just before Stu and John get to Evelyn. Unfortunately, the car doesn't work, so the milkman instructs his companion to push. Quiet pops out and helps them, but when the car starts moving, John and the woman hops in while Stu remains pushing. Evelyn revs, and the trunk suddenly opens, hitting the guard on the head and making him faint. Unaware that the man is not with them, John praises him for doing a great job. Though he briefly debates whether to return or not, he chooses to bid the guard goodbye. Mike awakens his friend and Stu alibis that the captives overpowered him. However, his team surrounds him with hostility. Meanwhile, John complains of being unarmed until he gets to New Chicago. As the risks increase, he asks Quiet where she wants to be dropped off. The woman tells him that her original destination with her brother is a sanctuary city without walls in the Midwest. John asks what it's called and Quiet recalls the location of the law enforcer's HQ. So she answers that the city is called Topeka. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.